today obviously marks one month here since the horrific Hamas attacks on October 7th. And we all just want to take a moment to acknowledge all the victims of that horrific act of terror. People slaughtered at a music festival, murdered in front of their kids in their home. Uh, just a, it's a horrible day. And also it was a day where uh, dozens and dozens of people were taken hostage, many of them still being held hostage. So we also want to say that our thoughts continue to be with all of them and, the, uh, and, uh, uh, and their families and their loved ones. I can only imagine the anguish that these families are still going through uh, and have now for the past month and the pain that they're feeling, the strong desire to get that seat filled at the dining room table again. We are going to continue to pursue every possible measure that we can to get those hostages released and to get those folks back with their families where they belong. Uh, and again, we continue to keep them in our thoughts and prayers. We're also keeping in our thoughts and prayers this one month in the many, many thousands of innocent Palestinians who have been killed in the conflict since October 7th, um, and the many more uh, who are injured and wounded uh, in the conduct of, this, of these operations. And quite frankly, the million and a half that have been displaced internally from their homes. Uh, we're, we're mindful of that suffering as well. And one month in, it's good for everybody to take a knee, take a pause, and remember uh, the scope of the suffering here and, and the, the terrible images that many of us have seen coming out of both Israel and Gaza. Now, on the humanitarian side, um, I can uh, tell you that over the last 24 hours, 93 trucks were able to enter Gaza through the Rafah border. Uh, that was uh, as of uh, yesterday. That brings the total to 569 trucks uh, since October 21st. And as we've said many times before, we know that's not enough. It's a trickle. I mean, as a matter of fact, before October 7th, that's about the number that was getting in every day. Now, it fluctuated a little bit, but it was several hundred, up to 500 a day. Um, as you all saw yesterday, the president spoke with Prime Minister Netanyahu and uh, he certainly discussed the need to continue to try to accelerate and increase the amount of humanitarian assistance that's going in. Uh, he also talked about the importance of pauses in the fighting to allow for aid to get in, people to get out, and for uh, hostages to be released. We'll keep those, that, that dialogue going, obviously, with, uh, uh, with the Prime Minister and his War Cabinet. Um, on the idea of pe people getting out, so we do expect more individuals to depart Gaza today via the Rafah crossing. Uh, to date, there's been over 400 U.S. citizens and their families who have been able to depart uh, and have been seeking the assistance of our consular team uh, out of the embassy in Cairo. And in just the last 24 hours, about 96, so just under 100 U.S. citizens and family members were able to, to, uh, to move across that border. And as I said, it's very fluid. We won't get the final count until the end of the day today because the day is still going on. But we do uh, expect that there'll be more Americans to come out uh, today. So keeping that Rafa crossing open for aid to enter and uh, Americans and other foreign nationals to leave has been a major priority for the president. We'll remain so going forward. Uh, and as I said, we're going to be focused on uh, getting folks out, getting aid in, and getting those hostages released.